evening, Terry Lee. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> You will have dealt with the emergency evacuation procedure and the filming and recording meetings before you arrive. So if you'd like to start off with submissions from the public, we are then seamless. Hello. 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 Hi, Tony, can you hear us? Hello, anybody there? Hello, Tony. Tony. Good evening. Good evening, all. Hang on. Yes, we yeah. can hear you. Oh, okay. Hi, Tony. Hi, Frank. 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 Um, yeah, sorry I'm not at the meeting tonight, but I got, got delayed it in um, uh, some other things that were going on today, investments and what have you. Um, so, yeah. But I, I am here. <clears throat> right, Tony, Michael started, he read out the um, filming recording meeting bit, and we've just now got to the submission from the public, so if you want to take over. Okay, right, so do we have any submissions from the public? No, it doesn't look like it. Is that a no? No. <coughs> okay, so um, the next thing is to receive apologies uh, for absence. Do we have any apologies? I haven't received any. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that everyone's here. Is everyone here? Well, John's not here. No. Yeah. John Ash is not there, nor is Ed Rose. No, okay. uh, there's no Keith's here. Yeah, everybody else is present and correct. Fab, Fab is not there. Very good. Fab yeah. is here. I'm here. Uh, Vic, sorry, Fab. It's okay. I, I couldn't see you on my uh, on my screen. Okay, cool. So, okay, we've had no apologies for absence. So those who were in abstention. Um, we've got no one, uh, Tom, is Tom there? Yes, he's here in the meeting. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Tom, for, for coming. Um, so the next, the next item, number three, is applications for dispensation by councillors. Does anybody have any other um, dispensations? No, oh, nothing. Um, I will have one, which is um, uh, 44... Which I'll, I'll email you anyway, Sharon. Yeah, I think that's equal to uh, the next agenda item, which is declarations. I beg your pardon, you're quite right. Declarations by members under the Local Government Act 1972. Do we yeah. have any declarations? I need to make an amendment on one of mine. Okay. Um, I have Avon and Somerset Constabulary. <coughs> Supposed to be just a uh, police and crime panel. So we can, we can cancel the A1 and Somerset Constabulary. Oh, that bit, bit, just the police crime panel. Okay, Jack? Yes. Okay. Is, is that the Avon? Is that not the Avon and Somerset scrutiny panel? No, that's different. Uh, okay, fine. Thank you. Brilliant. Well done, Frank, then. Um, and my only other declaration is uh, 44 Honey Circle, closed uh, Bradley State. If, if, I'll email that to you, Sharon, so you've yeah, got that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Put it on the next um, uh, paperwork. Yeah, I don't need the number, but the uh, uh, road. Okay, okay, Honey Circle. Okay, so the next thing is announcements from the chair. Um, the only announcements I have is that we had um, of an excellent 
uh, litter pick on Saturday, and there were four counts, as it turned out, myself, Roger, John Ash, and Michael, um, and uh, one member of the public on the Saturday. And we took the ball by the horns, by the initiative from Dell, um, our new uh, deputy town clerk, and we, we, we did an excellent uh, PR job in doing um, a litter pick. Um, on the Sunday, we continued it, where, uh, sorry, I forgot on the Saturday, there was also Nikki from the office, her daughter, my daughter, my granddaughter, and um, uh, that was more or less the contingent that happened on, on the Saturday. And on the Sunday, we continued the initiative, and uh, there were two members of the public, which I've sent thank you cards to, together with their children, uh, myself, Del, and her uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, young girl. Um, and um, I, I would just like, on a personal note, to say thank you for all of those that turned up and did a, a, a fabulous job and a PR job um, for for uh, doing the list of paper on, on the, the Saturday and, and, the, and the guys that turned up on the Sunday. Um, that's really the only announcements I have from the chat. So let's, let's move on. Um, we need to confirm the minutes of the meetings held on the 20th of May um, at the last um, uh, full, full town council meeting. Um, Sorry, uh, Ben wants us to say something? I was just going to propose the minutes. All right. Yeah, so I um, can I just ask, uh, because one of the councillors said, Elaine, did you think it was the, um, they thought it was the, um, proposal for the press vote person. Did you suggest Franklin, or was that linked to something else? Uh, I suggested Franklin for something, but I can't remember. Okay. I think that was the press one. Yeah, they suggested me, but I couldn't. No, you couldn't do it, but um, they just thought that you might be should just go in there that you had suggested. So. If you're happy for me to make that amendment by just putting in that you suggested him? Yeah, yeah. Definitely do that. Right, okay. So, um, yeah. so can we have, if, if on that amendment, can we have somebody to propose the uh, minutes for the um, meeting held on the 20th of May? Yeah. I think Ben proposed, yeah. yeah. Ben proposed. Who'd like to say second? Right, so, so Ben proposed, and and do you think second or Michael second? I'm quite happy to second. Yeah. Right, there you okay. go, Michael. Right, so that's with the. Uh, I'm just going to add in here. Bill, can you just bear with me a second while I just write that this in here? Yeah, of course, Sarah. Thanks. I've just added in that Councillor Elaine Hardwick suggested Councillor Franklin Uwusu Antwi, but he defines the position for the length. So we just add that in. That was proposed by Ben and seconded by Michael. Okay. And so those in favour like to show in the usual manner? Charles Harden. Uh -huh. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm fine with that, okay. I've got a problem with my video, I'll stick it on in a minute. Okay, thanks. There's a Roger. Thank you. Roger's got DTs. Right, Michael, I'm going to get Michael to sign in the vice chair, if that's all right. The initial box is very And then, put it where I have the beginning Thank you, Michael. I usually charge for getting autographs, you realize that. Yeah, 
So, um, the next item of the agenda is to deal with matters arising from the minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of May, not covered elsewhere on the agenda. Is there any other items? I think that's a no. So, we'll move on to 7.1. Uh, 2018 strategic planning recommendations. Uh, next stage is a skate park development including the equipment, interior and containers, completions of landscaping, uh, project tools and equipment. Um, that's just to say that that's still a work in progress, designs in and for inside quotes to be okay. The maximum budget of £10,000 has already been allocated by council, so Graham is working on that one. Okay, so um, 7.21 recommendations for 2019 uh, Budget Sector and Council Strategic Planning Meeting. A base court activity centre replaced damaged grass stroke ground in the preschool play area and artificial grass to allow outdoor play all year round. You have the, in your um, agenda pack, you have the updates from Dell, so we hand over to her to talk through her updates for the various things back. Okay, um, I've got 7.21, the Bailey Court Activity Centre will take damaged grass ground in preschool play area with artificial grass to allow outdoor play all year round. Uh, presently, the outdoor space is ideal for the small children. The grass has grown back. The area is being monitored regularly and grass seed will be used as needed. Preschool have commented on how lovely it's been um, to be able to use the area with the children recently. The trees could do with being cut back at some point um, within the area, but this would just allow the area to dry out and reduce the flooding. Artificial grass coats will be obtained in preparation for the wetter months. Um, and it's just to recommend the continued monitoring of the situation within the preschool outside area. Perfect. Well done. Well done, Dale. Um, any comments on that? No? So, c can we move on to, to the, um, uh, the next one, 7.22? Bailey Squat Centre Play Area, or Centre Play Area, um, design and install a new play area to replace the existing. Okay. Following on from the last meeting, the council deferred the project until the um, year-end figures became available. Yeah. Uh, the following was agreed at June Finance Committee meeting. The play area reserve NC3016 was increased from 109000 to 160000 for 2020-2021 to allow £75,000 to be spent on the Bailey Court play area and then reserve is replenished over the remainder of the four years. As reported in the 20th of March 2019 Health and Safety Report, the next project to be looked at will be Bailey Court play area. It was installed in 1996 and it's done extremely well, but it's towards the end of its life. Quotations have been obtained, which range from 75,000, increasing up to just over 90,000 pounds. The bulk of this is actually going to be the replacement of safety services and to include one inclusive space um, heat of pay equipment. Um, updates to be obtained on the health and safety aspects of the current play equipment, the last play inspection was carried out by the play inspection company in December 2019. At this inspection, it's considered that the play area is very low risk and the next annual inspection is due again in December 2020. My recommendation or offer the recommendation is to consider replacing the Bailey Court play area. The funding is in the budget, but if not, look at waiting until the next play inspection report is considered to replace in 2021. Um, uh, thank, thank you, Dale. That was a cracking report. Um, how, how does the rest of the councillors feel about that? Any I comment? Oh, with that, if it's if we um, if it needs to be done, I think it's best to get it done. 
for after the next report in December 2020. I'm looking at it then and or I'll get on with it now. Get on with it now. Did we not agree to defer it though until... Mm. No, no, no you act, what you agreed to defer it until was until the year-end figures were available and we had the up-to-date health and safety report. So you have both of those in your briefing note there. So. Yeah, I think that we, we should just get on with it and get it done now. If you've got the budget there, I think, I mean, it is well, well used. It is very old now. I, I, I tend to agree that it's it's time to do the job if we've got the money to do it. Yeah. Tony Ben is waving his hand. Sorry, I can't see him at the back of the room. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, I, I, I've been um, going into the now, 24 years old, so I think, what, why wait another half month not to get on and do it? I used to use that play part of that old. <laughs> I, I can remember picking bags up from school in that playground. It is the one that is the most used, actually, because it's quite by the, by the primary school, so it does get, obviously at the moment, with the school being shut, but I mean, it is used a lot. So they were tired. Yeah. Right. So, what is the logic of not doing it? It's really there. Yeah. What's the logic of not doing it? Just doesn't really make sense. And if there's any minuscule question of which it's Can I ask about the quotations? We've got 75,000 thereabouts, up to 90,000. Um, that's presumably from different companies, is it? Presumably. Um, so which is the one that we generally go with? And what companies are they? We usually get a list of uh, um, tenders or quotations. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we're. I think what what as officers, what we were looking for was guidance from councils to whether you want us to carry on and pursue it now or wait till next year. We will obviously then come back with all singing, all dancing diagrams and right, that yeah, sort of thing. But it was, then, yeah. it was before yeah. we got to that yeah. stage, yeah. it was for Dale to know yeah. which way you wanted to go yeah, from now. We need so, yeah. to look at it now. Yeah. I propose that we go ahead with it now. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree too. Yeah. Fair, fair <laughs> point, uh, Roger. Um, what you said that um, you know, we, we 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 need to move it forward because there's a possibility that these uh, this equipment is getting very old and it may become unsafe. Um, yeah. Or, yeah. You know, and um, to to continue and progress it, I think is a good idea. Well done, Brian. Yeah. So, are, we, uh, are we taking one by one or? So I think Elaine proposed, and I think Andy seconded the original proposal. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So those in favour, it's like a show of hands. Can you see our hands? Yeah. Right, so that is unanimous on there yeah. and unanimous in the room. That's unanimous, thank you very much. Oh. Well done, thank so you. we will then obviously get, well, they will all speak to various contractors and we will come back with proper plans and diagrams and then councils can make the decision on which one they'd like. Okay. So we'll move on to 7.23. Installation and replacement missing bus shelter in Webswood and refurbishment of the existing bus shelter. Okay. okay, um I've got managed to get quotation for replacement bus shelters. Uh, trying to source the exact same bus shelters has proven quite difficult but not impossible to get something fairly similar. Below on the actual um, report that I've done is the list of companies um, contacted in the quotations you see for consideration. Uh, you have quotation A, which is BC Shelters. The lead time on that is six to eight weeks, and that one comes in at three thousand one hundred thirty-eight pounds. That on top, quotation B is Shelter Store. Again, lead time six to eight weeks. Uh, this one comes in at two thousand one hundred pounds. Then to include for that. Quotation C, there were no similar bus shelters to the ones that we've got currently installed. Um, they're a lot more modern. Uh, because this is a replacement, I just looked into getting something similar. Uh, quotation D, uh, the installation time 
is two days and lead time is four to five weeks and the cost of that one would be £3,440 and then to do the VAT. As I've written in the report, all the described special services are similar to the existing ones situated around the town. However, quotation A's design is the most similar and will blend in with what um, the Bradley Stoke Town Council already has. As the lockdown gradually lifts over the next few weeks, um, it's expected the Perspex company will open up to customers and the upcycling of one of our shelters, I hope, will begin. Um, officers will identify the worst picking shelters to try and restore. Well, well, well done, Del. On, on that last um, quote you were talking about, what's the lead time on that one? Uh, lead time on that one is four to five weeks. Yeah, which is a lot better than 48 weeks. No, it's six to eight weeks. It's eight weeks. Four to eight weeks. Sorry, I thought you said eight weeks on that. That other question. I would think you should have done once. Well, hang on, just hold on a bit, I know. So I've looked at this, and A is the standard of the admin section. It's yeah. the weakest of the various um, quotations, which means it is therefore more likely to suffer in the event of vandalism. Mm. Um, and for the sake of an extra thousand odd pounds, if that, that's 300 pounds, sorry, I would go for quotation D, which has 80 millimeter by 80 millimeter aluminium, as opposed to item A, which has 80 by 40, therefore yeah. presumably half the strength. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Michael? Okay. Similar is, is D, because A is actually similar to what we already have. Yeah. Uh, like. Is it going to be totally different? Or? Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I know Elaine really wanted to say something, but can I just reply to Andy? Quotation D, they all look very, very similar. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're all very similar to the ones you have. Um, but A was just the most similar to the ones that you have existing. Can I, can I just give you um, a finance update? Um, so there is actually nothing in the new bus shelter budget, which is nominal code 9021, but there is £20,000 in the street furniture reserve, which is nominal code 3019. So the money is there to purchase the new bus. Yeah, I, was, I was just going on the basis that A looks very similar to what we've got there, but if B is quite similar, D is quite similar as well. Yeah. Why would he go with that? You don't necessarily want to have them all the same, you can no. get a better quality yeah. one for much the same money. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's yeah. go for D then. Yeah, well, well, well done uh, for all spotting that, and um, let's go for D. Yeah. I think there's a design in the line there, that's just the... That's just the, the way that's the way that's if I can tell I mean in tubing, it's like the size of tubing, it's not like the thickness of the aluminium itself or the compound they use, it's just the it's just the size of it. It's that one can you get I guess it's that it's it's linked to the roof construction, isn't it? Which I think is the bit that's most likely to get vandalised with people climbing on top of it. If I was what I personally want to talk about a link. <laughs> uh, I know they're similar, girls are similar, but we don't want to be in that frame which else looks like. Right. Because that one, the quotation A, yes, the option grade of the, like the uh, aluminium tubing could be, it's slightly thinner on one edge, so it's more of a rectangle than a square, but there could be more of it as opposed to the quotation D, which might have less overall um, material. And aluminium tubing constructing the the um, the uh, bus shelter. It's hard to tell without a picture or a diagram of the actual thing we're buying. But quotation D includes seating as well, so which yeah, does. But so do they include perch seating? Oh yeah, so does yeah, yeah, on the back end. Yeah. I don't think we should uh, put too much emphasis on the new ones looking the same as the old ones. Because on that basis, everyone will drive a car that looks like a Model T Ford. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice to have consistent. <laughs> well, actually, as Vicky pointed out today, that um, this is just the first of our very old bus shelters that is going to need to be replaced. So if we do change the design slightly, then 
going forward when we replace the others we can match them up to the new one we've put in rather than mm. matching the old one but it's that. guaranteed for 10 years as well isn't it yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. What if you then decided, so if you, if you wanted to take the old out and install the proper new, then wouldn't it be better to give Dell the freedom to go for a whole range of types of transfers? So trying to go for a similar roof design, a similar type of perch seating, you know, maybe it might be more. Ben, ben with all due respect, is the bus shelter? It's, it's not a, a, a huge uh, um, epitaph that we're building here. We're looking at a bus shelter, and um, I'm sure that if it's similar to what we've got, I, um, I don't think we've had the scenario where there's been a bus shelter that's been destroyed because of the thickness of the actual still, or aluminium, or whatever it may be made of. Um, and I think at this moment in time, we need to decide um, whether we need to replace this bus shelter or not. Well, I yes, think Elaine, yes, Elaine's got her hand yeah, up. Yeah. Elaine's has, uh, is up. Yeah, uh, I've been looking at quotation B. The reason why it's got Holton anti-vandal, but it's an anti-vandal bus to, um, shelter. And that is the sort of thing that we need to go down the route of. As we know, bus shelters get vandalised. If this is offering anti-vandal, also, it's got seating, and it's only 2,100. Not like the others, where the others aren't anti-vandal. Maybe slightly smaller by dimensions, by the look of it, but personally, I would want to go for anti-vandal because you don't want to keep replacing the glass or the polyester or whatever it is. So I think quotation B would be more suitable. Yeah. Fair shout, Lily. Um, but um, I think in history we haven't actually had any bus shelters or have yeah, we? Or this one that, that it is going to put in is the one that is to replace the one that was actually burned down? Yeah. Okay. In that case, maybe <laughs> the, 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 the best shelter is uh, vandal proof. In that case, <laughs> 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 Sharon. Yes. Sharon, Sharon, out of interest, if this was the one that was burnt down, were we? Did we claim on insurance for this? It was. Was like, that pay for this? No, it was many years ago, before my time, and I've been here ten and a half years. So it was a very oh, long time. That long. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can yeah, I just a thought, you know, if it had been claimed on insurance, we could have gone for a better one. We would definitely be in, yeah, we would, if it was now, we would definitely do that. But as I say, yeah. now, this is a very long time ago. Yeah. Okay. So we Brian's got his hand up as well. you got his hand up as well? Yeah. Brian, yeah. Brian. <coughs> Chair. Chair. Um, I think we're doing the meeting really well. I, I must admit, um, I find it a little bit strange the way the meeting is being conducted though because on so close and I think Roger will um, say this, what we do um, is if we've got a small committee like this, we literally go round and ask everybody to speak. And if they don't want to speak then fine um, and they make their point and then a proposal is made and then we go through it. It seems to be a discussion which is sort of emanating directly from um, the council chamber um, and I do know that within South Gloucestershire and also even Fire Brigade, which I'm on, we're not allowed to have meetings where you've got like hybrid meetings, you've got part of Zoom and part others. Anyway, going back to the um, to the situation, um, I think uh, the suggestion made by Elaine is a, is a really good one. And the reality of the matter is, it's like half the price of the most expensive one, which means that you could literally put two two in, you know, if we had to do to another one, that would be another saving. So I've got no objection to it at all. I think this is a really good idea. And if that was a proposal, I'd like the second um, Elaine's proposal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. That's a, 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 a good thought, what, what you just put through there. Um, so can we possibly have a proposal to move this item on? Yeah, I propose. And I'll second it. 
That's to purchase the cheapest one. Did it try B. Location B. Or but B is the best uh, brand of it is in the type. Not going to teach you to bring the guarantee for 10 years. Well, B can pays that can I just ask Del, did it does it say, do you know with that quotation B, the length of guarantee? I haven't got it off the top of my head, it's something I can find out. They're all guaranteed at some level, but what level this one would be, I mean, if it's it claiming it's anti band on it should have some fairly decent um, guarantees against it. And also, if we are insured, if anything were to happen to it, it could be replaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be covered under our insurance. Yeah, it's pretty cheap. It's cheap. So we've had a proposal by Elaine. We seconded by Brian. So those in favour would like to sort of show hands? Well, that's for quotation B. Mm -hmm. for quotation B. Yeah, go so on. So yeah, go with G, Brian. One. Two, three, four, five, six. So that's seven in favour. Those against? Show hands. One, two, three, four. Against? Abstentions. Keith, no what are you doing? I was in favour. Right, sorry, I didn't see that. So that's eight in favour. Sorry. And four against. Four against. We can't uh, see you, Keith. That's probably the problem with your hand up. Uh, <laughs> up again, Brian. Is it hand up on his screen? screen? Yeah. I can't see you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we move on. And um, the next one is the installation of solar panels and other energy uh, producing uh, products on Prairie State uh, Town Council uh, sites. Now I know this is an ongoing uh, project um, and um, unless you want to say anything about it, Dell, um, um, I uh, suggested I will assist you on progressing this a little bit further. Um, I, I was one of the instigators all but the, about eight years ago to suggest that this may be an option um, for our sites that we go a little bit more greener and look at solar panels. Um, and um, they got good food because they thought that it was like to be vandalized. But um, if it, I, I, I haven't seen one uh, aspect ever to see that there's uh, some football or has been kicked on a solar panel has broken it. And with the new technology today, they're not actually made of glass anymore. And it's more robust uh, materials, and um, this is one of the reasons why I was suggesting that we sort of look at this again. And um, I know uh, Dell's been uptrising all sorts of things um, during this uh, lockdown period, um, and I suggest that I could help her in um, obtaining possible quotes. Um, would you like to send it, Dell? That I, Elaine's got her finger up. Yeah. Um... I agree with Tony because I also, many years ago, suggested that we have solar panels. We've got to show uh, councils that, and also the residents that we are going green and we'll save a lot of money by having our own, generating our own electricity, heating and all sorts. So I feel that we need to do it now, if possible, or delay it. Yeah, I, I agree. Let's get it done. We have to show that we are going green. Well, I think, Chair, my public recommendation is to continue to investigate green yeah. and improve energy feasible. And because right now, after this COVID, there will be better solutions coming at the light of the right and jumping at the sun. Yeah. So, but I completely agree with the team. Tom's saying that he agrees with the proposal that we carry on, well, it's not really yeah, a proposal, but we need to carry on investigating this in more detail. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Keith yeah. has indeed got his hand up. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Tony, and also the uh, suggestion by Elaine that we should uh, get on and do this. I mean, really, get, get the gen up together as much information as possible. 
value for money and let's go with it, you know. I mean, you're right, they're made of far more robust materials nowadays. Exactly. Um, and um, as, I, as I said earlier, um, Del's been a bit inundated, certainly within her new role and what she's actually doing around the uh, town centre. And um, I, I did uh, suggest the other day that I, I, I'd assist her in uh, helping her with obtaining quotes. Um, I'm retired now, so I've got more time. Mine's good, Xander. Is that okay, Brian? Yeah, <clears throat> um, Tony, I think, I think you're taking on a really good um, and useful task <clears throat> and uh, coming forward to, to help the, um, <clears throat> the officers with this. I mean, it was over 12 years, well, in fact, it was basically back in 2007 um, when we were looking at this initially. Yeah. And to be quite frank with the council, were very short-sighted. Um, there was money available <clears throat> from the government to um, spend the time and actually have um, people come in to look at exactly what was needed so we could go out to consultations. There was quite a lot of money available and, and they didn't use it. I, I could not believe uh, that we had so many people at that time on the council uh, just couldn't see, the, you know, a bit of blue sky thinking that this would be sensible. At the time also, we have had quite a big amount of money going back into the council from the power which we didn't use. And, and the damn things were free because the government was paying for it for councils to put them in to actually help um, sort of um, basically advertise to local people, as Elaine so rightly said, that was happening. So I think it's about time you got on with it. And I think, Tony, I think you're the right person to do this. So um, I think that's a really good, uh, good yeah. suggestion. I, I said to, uh, yeah. Sorry. Tara, I was going to say I totally agree with Brian. I mean, at, at the time we went for the new build, and by today's standards, this would have been one of the criteria of a new build, you know. I mean, we should be going, you know, full belt at this. I agree. I, I, I agree with Keith and with Brian. We need to get it done now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, get I, a new promotion to, to, to put, start getting it there. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Elaine, and thank you, Keith. Uh, for your support on this. Um, we, we need to look at it and, and um, uh, not taking anything away from Del because she's been going above and beyond her a role yeah, as she has done to date. And I, and I said because of her um, uh, commitments, what she's got, I would suggest that I would give her a, a possible hand. I, I initiated some of this in the early days when we actually had a quote, a presentation, sorry, uh, by a, uh, a solar panel company, which, which I subsequently put 32 panels on it in the Sonic Hall in, in Park Street, and they're benefiting from that ever since. And so, so we've got to look forward on this. There is a new government initiative where they are actually giving grants out to uh, homeowners to improve their uh, uh, greenness. And you never know, um, we may be able to even um, uh, tap on some of that funds. Anyway, let's move it on. Um, so the uh, next item on the agenda is to receive the minutes of the Financial uh, Committee held on the 17th of June, 2020. Proposal. No, it's just to receive them. Uh, yeah, so we've received them. So all the, uh, we need a seconder just to say that we've received No, you, no, you don't. You just, you are literally just okay. receiving them, so you're just having right. them. The committee so, will do all that. In that case, just to move on, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll receive the Planning Environmental Committee meeting as well, together with the uh, minutes from the Youth and Leisure and Music Committee. Yeah. So that's all those three um, uh, subcommittees. So we've agreed all that. So um, does anybody need to sign those? No. Okay, let's move on. Next one then is the updates from South Gloucestershire Council Ward members uh, relevant to uh, uh, Bradley State. So I know Keith would probably like to say something because I know he secured some funds to uh, uh, resurface some of the roads in Bradley State. Keith, you want to start on this one? Uh, sorry, Tony, you lost me there. Okay. Well, now, I, 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 from the uh, press release, I saw yeah. that you have secured some funds 
to resurface oh, no. the roads on, in, in Bradley Stoke, and I, and I thought that was a, a, a cracking effort that you did on that, and, I, and, and I'd like you just to update us. Yeah, there's, well, there's not much to add, really. I mean, other than the fact that uh, they are now going to carry on and get on with some of the roads that have been badly needed doing. We've got Winterbourne Road being done as well, um, and Orpheus, you know, which is uh, obviously used a great deal by people there using the bus stops and things. It's all going to get done. And and the photograph you had did that you had did that you had done sorry that you put on the the website um, uh, and can you just elaborate where that is? Uh, no, I haven't seen that photograph. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> pointing at you was point you was leaning over Keith pointing at it. Was I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pointing at the road. And, and, yeah. and uh, badly needed. <laughs> That must have been rinsed and close if I was looking at the road. <laughs> it was about somewhere down that end. That's like Braden Avenue. Yeah, well, it was rinsed and close. Yeah. Well, well, Braden Avenue rinsed and close. And in fair play to you for securing that money from South Ross. Yeah. <laughs> Which is going to help the estate. Um, so is anybody other the other South Ross or County Councillors that are also on uh, yeah. the town council about to say anything? Yeah. Um, I yeah. think Roger has. Can you hear? Yeah. Go on, Roger. I don't hear, right. Okay, Bradley Stone Scouts. They put in a plumbing application for their storage container to okay. remain this place for the Can I have that off? So I don't yeah. have to write all this down. For a further two years, okay? However, South Gloucestershire Planning Officers turned around. And said no, it's it's ill fitting. It doesn't uh, it stands out, and therefore we're only going to allow you one year. So Nick Nelson from the Scouts contacted me to see if I would support them. And being a former Scout, patrol leader, <coughs> senior Scout, perhaps I should be called senior Scout emeritus. Um, <laughs> did I help them? And then I said yes. Right, so I've been involved in an exchange of emails with a planning officer called Mykola Druazikin over several weeks. But South Gloucestershire aren't going to move on this. I've argued the case and uh, they're not going to move. Now, this has been further complicated by the actions of one female Bradley Stoke town councillor from Bradley Stoke North, and I shan't mention her name, who put this on the circulated schedule, presumably with the aim of refusing them even one year. Now it's a great shame the Scouts get so little help on this council. They've got 250 members, 50 potential leaders, and a full waiting list. Contrast this with the thousands of pounds we shell on the skate park for a relatively few number of years. The Scouts prepare use for the future as a responsible members of society. Not sure what the skate park does, but South Gloucestershire has said that they will support a permanent brick structure for this for their storage. So I would support this and hope that this council will too. Now I was going to ask Sharon what we can what can the Scouts claim? Can they claim a larger ground for such a thing as this? Uh, no, but I mean, look, for, on our grant funding, there would. Yeah. Well, I mean, they the already get. The they already get. Um, well, I know. The only uh, thing they actually get is reduce the fees on their um, tenure at Brook Way. No, we throw thousands of pounds at cricket, we they, throw they, thousands they, of pounds at football, we throw thousands of pounds at Brighton Stoke Radio. We throw thousands of pounds at the skate park. The scouts get absolutely nothing, and yet they're the biggest of the year in this town. Sorry, they're the biggest unit in, in this town by far. And, uh, and get one lot from that. That. Sorry, what? Just a minute. Thanks for bribing me, sir. I don't understand. Chair. What? Can I speak? Yeah. Right. Okay. Un under the um, under the rules for planning, uh, these units are able to have temporary permission for so many years. And 
the reason South Gloucestershire won't budge is not because they're being awkward about escapes. They're actually trying to comply with, with the rules. And in fact, if Bradley Stoke want to um, push some money in, if Roger wants to make a proposal to build a permanent storage unit there, I'm certain that um, there could be planning permission given for uh, a permanent structure. But at the yeah. moment, the, these units are pretty unsightly. Okay, it's a useful unit, and people are using it, I think. Um, I'm not sure. I have a, actually heard rumours that uh, it's not used as much as it might be, or in fact it's very blocked up with stuff. It's but it, there it is. Uh, it's no, no, I've heard rumours. Yeah. I've heard rumours. But uh, the real, reality is, if if, well, Stoke, if if the scouts want a permanent building, there's no reason why they can't come to us and ask us to help. It's simple yeah. as that. Yeah. So these types yeah. of structures have got a shelf life as far as Bradley uh, yeah, yeah. Stoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chair, um, mm. I think Ben's got his hand up. I don't know whether you can see him. Ben, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Ben. Um, I was going to say something very similar to what uh, Ryan said, actually. So, I mean, that the, the whole facility up there, obviously, in the last few years, we've been trying to make improvements to it, etc. Um, a storage unit, regardless of who's a tenant in that building, would be of added value to the as a yeah. council. Yeah. And I mean, if you had the right size storage unit as well, it might be beneficial to the council itself yeah. in the storage yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we know obviously there's plenty of um, money and things like youth projects that could be used to subsidise that type of activity, or we could look at other types of funding that we've got available across the council, or in fact, the scouts could apply for grant funding and then give yeah. it back to us essentially. Yeah, because so they, they could apply for a one off grant. There's none yeah. of our specific yeah. grants yeah. that fit within the criteria, but they could apply for grant funding. But I, I guess if they, they then. But if they were, could they apply for like lottery funding and that sort of thing, which we could put money in as well towards it, would, that would work? I think, I think it would just be good, really, maybe at the next um, or council meeting or planning meeting or wherever it's appropriate, or youth like meetings, to have the scouts yeah. come well, in. The scout, yeah. Well, the yeah. scouts have asked for a meeting with Dell and myself right. to just look at yeah. what this was like before they knew about their planning so obviously yeah. they're looking up to the future mm -hmm. um, but i think to be honest because it's going to be a significant level of money it would need to come back to full count i yeah. think not but not I, a committee i just think in general if they give them say for argument's sake if the planning office in south Coast is saying to them we'll give you a year i mean a year is plenty of time for us yeah. to put some planning together in terms of a permanent structure mm -hmm. so maybe i mean the Scouts approach us appropriately, or even we just see it as a, an initiative mm. that, as a council, just want to invest in our buildings. Mm. Um, that can be a useful activity for us to do. Um, I don't really see the tenant and the, the reason the tenant is using that storage space as being a. So, uh, I, don't, I don't link the two. So I wouldn't link the fact that the scouts are using storage to be the reason we should go from storage or um, have them. Health and storage. I think it's just about the scouts who attend there, they need the storage and they kind of step in some way to kind of get that with the, with the storage unit. Yeah. Well, that's what, they, that's what they, they, want. Want. they want a brick built unit. Mm -hmm. And so, Gloucestershire says that they're look uh, kindly upon that. You know, they will try to that. Yeah. So, it's just a question of funding. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the problem. But, sure. but like I said, the scouts are right. Everyone else gets money. Right. 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 Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Roger. You can hold on just for a second, Brian. Um, Andy put his hand up a little while ago. What would you like to say, Andy? You're on mute, Andy. Yeah, unmute yourself. If, if you're looking at a brick structure at the back of there, then surely in the long term it might be worth looking at replacing all three of those storage units and putting brick structure in there. Our council loan, our building zone is coming to an end next year. If we needed to, we could fund it with an additional loan, but then put the council's maintenance facilities in house in a brick building as well. Makes sense, Ron. Yeah, um, I agree with uh, what Andy said, and I also agree with what Ben said because if you look back in history at that centre, there was always a problem with storage. You know, we had quite a few people actually using it at one point. 
and it was very, very difficult for them to actually store any of their, any of their items. So I really do believe that we should go back and actually have a look at that space and put something decent in there. It's a good building. It's got lots of uh, facilities there with big rooms. The problem is it's not got decent storage space, and that is why the scouts have had to use that. But other users also use it. They haven't got enough storage space. Yeah, but the scouts want it for their, for their own use because they've got 250 people going there. So they need to get their stuff out very quickly um, for changes in activities. Right? Yeah. It's, it's the funding though. Yeah. So, okay. Is there suddenly the way yeah. that we can, I mean, that, that should classify as part of youth, surely. Well, I think that, I mean, that's, you know, your, I, I, get, I have no idea on the, the potential cost of a big no, bill, of a, I but I would think I probably, quite expensive. what, what, top 50, 60, 70, 80,000, I've got no so idea. That's quite expensive, because you haven't spent on building the office out there. Because that would be an unlimited, maybe like. Yeah, perhaps it's a lot cheaper than that, then I've got no idea. I would have thought about four. That would be an issue. Yeah, of course, you do need to be done. But basically, if they could say. Well, we need the. I think they'll have their hand up then. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, depending on the size of the development, I, from my previous role, um, we just did a reconfigure of a building and added additional storage to one of our existing older buildings. And that was a massive development, but the actual additional size um, was quoted at about between forty and sixty-five thousand pounds. Yeah. It's something that would be in a similar area to the three storage units that we currently have at Brookway. So that's just something yeah. I've. I've Giving you some sort of costing on. Yeah. Um, well, if it isn't, it's not. The scouts get nowhere near that sort of money. But they might be able to get external grant funding if we put funding in as well. Yeah. There's, there's right. Because a lot of, I know a lot of sort of like lottery and that sort of funding, they look for match funding. If you, if you yeah. bring match funding from somewhere else, they will right. fund yeah. projects. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, there is a potential there for that. Oh, we've got nothing. They're going to meet with them anyway, right? Yeah. yeah okay. um, and yeah. then I would suggest that we invite them to come to September full Council yeah. with their ideas, and we can have done a bit more yeah. research within yeah. that time yeah. as well. I'm not sure how I feel or what I think about making the scouts go and get lots of funding for improvement of our building. The reason I say that is because. We, there's a lot of lottery funding and grants being, which we as a town council can't apply for, but they can. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Brian yeah. and Elaine, they've got no, well, their own. Well, they've tried with three or four years, tried to find some They had their eye on that, uh, that land opposite the Tesco garage, but that's earmarked for um, future homes. So they're frustrated there, and they're frustrated by the council. Thank you, Ron. If we could perhaps just have Brian and then Elaine after that, because they both got their hands up for a while. Okay, okay, the scouts, they lease the building. Okay, yeah. and it's all very well saying that, you know, there's lottery funding for other organisations other than the council, but the reality of the matter is it's council owned. And we can actually, you can actually sort of suddenly give um, the uh, scouts a piece of land to have a building on. You won't be able to do that because the land itself is owned by South Gloucestershire, yeah. which is leased to uh, yeah. Bradley Stoke, and therefore you go round in a circle. If Bradley Stoke wants to uh, be sensible about this, we have got a building which does not actually serve its um, <clears throat> people well that are actually renting it because there's not enough space there. However, the scouts decided a long time ago when they came to the building initially that they had storage elsewhere and they used the building, rented it, and then they decided they wanted to abandon the storage they had and then they applied to Bradley Stoke to have some temporary storage there. If Bradley Stoke wishes to increase the size of the storage areas they've got to facilitate people, then there's no reason at all why they shouldn't actually do that. We have got, we do raise rates. Roger uh, was quite sensible in what he said. 
in reality, you know, there are youth as such, there are a different branch of youth. The scouts actually raise a lot of money themselves, but the fact is they rent it, we pay them the rental money as a grant, and then that comes back into the council. But in reality, we do do what we can, but we need to stand up and be counted, and the buck stops here, and we should be getting some extra storage, which is sensible. Think storage which is going to be able to be used, which is properly lighted, it's fit for purpose, it's not damp, etc. Well, well, well said, Brian. Let's move on to Elaine. I agree with Brian. Um, I think that it should be um, in the council's possession and not the scouts. If the scouts get that built, they own it. Even though it's on South Lost Land, they'll own it. So I think that if, like what Andy said, if we pay for the town council building, if we can afford it, why don't we do it? We build that storage and then we can say it belongs to the town council and not to the scouts. Uh, Michael's got his hand up. Yes, I think it might be useful to know, Joan, what other property we actually are responsible for, either own or um, lease from the town of Gloss, and what use it is being put to. Because it may be, I don't know, but it may be that there are other properties we can get our hands on that would be suitable for the scouts to use without causing any real um, inconvenience to the present occupier. There are all our sites that we have, so here, Bailey's Court and Brookway Activity Centre, mm -hmm. they're all That's short of good. storage space yeah. um, and there is nowhere else that the scouts could go to meet and yeah. have storage space because yeah. just of how it works. That's okay. just, yeah. Yeah. So, that's not an option. Um, so, um, is, is there any proposal to move this thing forward? Well, no, you, you can't have a proposal because it's not on the agenda. So, we will just we go and meet with with the scouts and invite them to September for yeah. council. If that's yeah. Good starting point. They, yeah. they, they can put forward whatever they want to do. Yeah. 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 Okay, got another point. Sorry. Got another point as well. Different one. Different one, this time. Right. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're all in. It's about the worthies. Do you know where the worthies is? If you don't know where the worthies is. If you went down here to Rabbit Roundabout in a straight line, it's the last road on the right. On the right. Okay. I was approached by Mrs. R.C. Young asking my, for my support in getting traffic lights installed at that junction of the Worthies and Bradley Stoke Way. I mean, apparently it's very, very difficult for people exiting the Worthies into Bradley Stoke Way because of increased traffic and increased uh, traffic speeds. And uh, she'd asked that uh, she'd like the traffic lights put there. Okay, I've been to uh, I've been to the road traffic engineers and requested that this is put on the local transport priority list. But I got an email from um, Andrea Bonomi, an engineer, yeah, thinking that this is likely to cost between two hundred and three hundred fifty thousand wow. pounds. It's not it's not a small job. It's a very, very complex thing. It's a set of traffic lights. Wow. So it's gonna it's gonna take its chances with other, you know, proposals as well. So I'm not that hopeful. However, she's gone round uh, the worthies and she's got a petition of sixty three people, which is quite a lot for um, a smallish road like that. Um, so it'll have to stay on the priority list and uh, and be considered uh, Whenever, whenever they get around to it, I think one of the problems with the world is might well be right turning traffic coming out of it and trying to get across the yeah, I think, yeah, the uh, I'm wondering sure whether yeah. another option might be to make uh, put a little central reservation in and make turning out of the world is left turn only, so people would have to go up to the roundabout and all the way back. But in practice, it's yeah, hundred yards. Or so. practice, that's why they have to do it. 
Oh, there's, yeah. a brown, there's a slight brown yeah. one from Rabbit Roundabout where you yeah. can't actually see traffic coming in. Yes, and right. if it's me, it's going the way it wants. They will be able to get out very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Michael, and uh, thank you, Roger, on that. Yeah, um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's uh, it. Uh, yeah, uh, after the traffic engineers, etc. Uh, uh, Elaine's got her hand up. I agree with Michael. Um, that they should have a no right turn. This with this similar situation with the Bluebells um, residential <coughs> around the corner, where they was having problems coming out of um, there, and we made it that there was no right turn. They had to go left and then round the round back, back up. Mm -hmm. uh, doing a no right turn would be more sensible and it'd be cheaper. Yeah. Much cheaper. And also, traffic lights actually really have an impact on the traffic anyway, don't they? Yeah, they would be. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was thinking, yeah. 250 yeah, yeah. There's a huge amount of money here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I'll ask the question. Yeah, but the traffic problem would be there because the traffic lights are The tension would be having a problem because of traffic. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the question is, can we have traffic lights? Really, it shouldn't be that. It should be a family resolve the situation. Yeah. 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 It, would, it would be crazy, I think, to install traffic lights on um, the Worthies because if you did it on Worthies, then every single road is going to be yeah, yeah, right there. It's an, an economical. Um, it is difficult to do. It's so, difficult to go out of there. Uh, there we, and, and, and at the moment, in fairness, because of the um, excess traffic, it's going through our estate uh, due to the uh, lockdown of the um, Patchway Gypsy Pax Lane Bridge. And it, we, 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 we need, unfortunately, to suffer this situation in which we've got at the moment. But that will ease up as and when the new bridge is installed. Although we know it's all behind schedule, but it will eventually get installed and um, things like it will ease up a little bit so they won't have such a, a situation that's got problems getting out on, onto the main road. I think I'm going to work. Andy's going to find that way as well. Yeah, Andy. Did, if I remember rightly, are traffic lights going to be installed anyway at all four junctions going on to Rabbit Roundabout, the Great State Roundabout? So literally about 100 yards back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It'd be letting traffic in from the uh, from the B one four one seven four, wouldn't it? Yeah, you're yeah right. there's always gonna be a, a period. There's always gonna be yeah, traffic yeah, in yeah, 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 there's yeah. gonna be a little delay <laughs> over the next ten seconds perhaps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fast enough. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I think uh, the other issue you've got to think of is that obviously the Bradley Stoke Way and being that it's on the Metro bus route going through yeah. to the bypass, um, you, you know, they don't want too many traffic lights because it holds oh. up buses. I know. Um, yeah. And if you're going to have a light control roundabout junction there, um, I, I think really you're right. You know, no right turn solves the issue. Okay, it means that the people coming out have got to go down to the roundabout and turn around. Um, but yeah, as you say, um, uh, Tony, you know, the gypsy patch issue will resolve itself. Uh, the bridge is now destined to be moved about November. Um, yeah. Obviously, there will be ongoing works on gypsy patch, but uh, eventually it will sort itself out. Yeah, you know, fair play show. Uh, for that peak, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, any other, any other Yeah, Ben, Ben, he's got his hand up. Okay. I was just going to pick up on a point that Andy made that the light control jumps on that new roundabout, but it is light control for pedestrians and cyclists. Not, it's not controlling the traffic flow. It's just controlling the 
crossing the road. Yeah. Uh, so you can cross in the back. Mm. A resident in the Worthington would have to nip down to the traffic light and press the button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they might have a few seconds before they, yeah. before they get steamrolled. <laughs> <laughs> it's slowly getting out. <laughs> so let's, let's move we, could, we could talk about this uh, junction all the time. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, let's move yeah, on. Can I have your um, paper? No, you can. Yeah. This one. Sorry? You read out what you've written, didn't you? So, yeah, well, most of it, yeah. If, so. if you could pass it on through to Sharon, she could add it to the minutes, please. Uh, <coughs> yeah, all right. Okay, thank you, George. Oh, um, thank right. you very much. So, the next matter is um, financial matters. Approval what about Frank, then? Has he got anything to say? Not a No. Okay. no. Well, <laughs> Yeah, no, no other comments from any other South Scotiashire county councillors? So I was just going to talk about this um, old brewery power station giving out grants to support uh, overcome COVID-19 in our area. And we've made few contacts to advocate if there is any food banks within Bradley Stoke Pathways to give for the hotel. If so far within Bradley Stoke North, I identified Amberley Road Church, I think they have this food cafe. I'm not sure if there are any of our uh, councillors here know any food bank within our area that they can tap into this funding. There's the, I think, because John asked, John Ash asked me about this, I think, and I did say that there's the North Bristol Food Bank, yeah, exactly. which yeah. covers, well, it covers, there's, a, um, I think it's in various churches in the area. Oh. Uh, and there is one in, in um, Bradley Stoke, I think, isn't there? And there is also there is also community there. fridges. Oh, okay. That's at Amberley Road, isn't it? Amberley Road, yeah, I'm the one in Amberley yeah. Road. Also, um, St Chad's Church in Patchway have a food bank. Yeah, that I think that one's part of the North Bristol Food Bank group as well. That's so, that's that's yeah, that's what this is. The North Bristol Food Bank is connected to the Sausage Trust. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Elaine, for that. And um, Andy, could you possibly just send those details through to Franklin? So he's, he, he's got those details. That would be helpful. So I'll pass it on to the banks. If that's possible, please. Who's calling you? Sharon, do you have a list of these food banks that I can have? Um, all I, I went on the um, on Google and Googled um, food banks in Bradley Stoke and this North Bristol Food Bank Trust came up with a list of churches and everything who are involved in it. So they are in this sort of surrounding area. But I can send you the link tomorrow, definitely, yeah. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Sharon. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've had all the updates from the South Gloucestershire County Wards, Council Wards. So the next one is the financial matters to approve the bills and direct debits for payment. Um, you have uh, that in your agenda pack, Councillor? I guess you've all read those, so there's, um, if anybody got I, any I propose it, I propose, looks yeah. fine to me. Anybody well, got it? Uh, well, I've got it there. So we put this is we Lloyd Room by what's that about? That's a cancelled room they've already paid for the um few of them. Over the past few months yet, yeah. Not less of the main, but they're open. No, okay. So I think did Elaine propose? I second. seconds. So we have an um everyone in favour, put the show hands, please. Okay, yeah, unanimous, thank you very much. Perfect. So let's move on to the next one, which is item 13, to deal with the miscellaneous, miscellaneous matters. 13.1 quotes for repairs of roof structure at Bayes Court Activity Centre. Any comments? No? Yeah. <laughs> If I just read out the report quickly, um, Baby Court centres struggle with a leaking roof for quite some time. As part of the ongoing maintenance programme, it needs to be fixed. Every 
time near the hilly down door, the orchard where it becomes waterlogged, the users must move to another room. There's been lucky so far um, that an empty room has been available, but looking forward, we need to look after the asset and ensure the ceiling is repainted. There's old watermark um, on, on the ceiling that have become brown. Um, and we also need to protect the new flooring, which was fitted two years ago. The roof valley section, directly above the orchard room, has been badly damaged several times. It's suggested that we either re-roof the whole area to improve lining the valley, or to repair the existing roof loop. Um, we felt that many areas where the felt needs to replace the tiles, repairing any cement work in the valley. As the existing tiles are no longer in production, one suggestion is to use something similar one contractor has suggested buying bulk, a bulk order of the tiles, which is suitable, and having less over time to use as and when they become broken, which they do each year with a critical vandalism. Um, below in the chart on the report are the three quotes and specifications for those works to be carried out by the different contractors. I don't know if you've got a copy in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, the, the first contractor does specify the whole area would be re, re, um, or yeah. re, completely repaired. The second one would be um, just to patch up the area in depth, and the other one would be, again, just a patch up job. Uh, my recommendation would be to go with the second quotation because when he came to inspect the roof, he actually repaired something as a temporary measure. So we're, we're looking at the difference between doing a whole roof of £4,244, that's right, or a second option which um, Dale recommended, which was to, uh, uh, to fix the roof issues at this centre um, and have um, other tiles left over of 1400 plus VAT. And the third option was to um just do a patch up job for seven hundred quid plus the VAT. Um huge difference in prices. Um however we need to decide on possibly which which um avenue we want to take on this, where we do a a little patch up for seven hundred quid, a more a better patch up which was Dell recommendation for fourteen hundred, or go for the full hold and spend four thousand two hundred and forty four. We do have the um, Bailey's Court Repair and Maintenance Budget, which is nominal code 8041. It currently has £24,720 in it. That's for the year. Um, um, so, or, 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 a fair play, Sharon. Although we've got the money in the budget, and in mind we were saying it earlier in, in um, the year, because we're not sure what's going to happen with the uh, uh, situation with the pandemic of how many people are likely to get un unemployed. We still need to look at very carefully what, 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 what we're going to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just telling you, uh, informing councils of the fact that there is a budget available for whatever you might decide to do. Yeah, but we've got to do kitchens at the way of me. Yes, no, the, if you remember, it was the kitchen here, yeah. the two kitchens yeah. here, and we've deferred that till next financial yeah, year. Yeah. So this is this is actually just for Bailey's Court repair and maintenance well, budget. Yes. Yeah. Just for Bailey's Court. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the last of the year, and there's quite a lot of stuff that comes out of that. I think we virtually spent all of the budget last year. Yeah. Yeah. Spent back twenty one last year. Yeah. So. Right. But I think um, we can try the budget. I put them in the budget to do whichever option you need to do. Sure. Need to decide on which option. Tony, Tony. No, Tony, it's difficult. You're breaking up a bit. Can you speak up a bit, Tony? Yes. I hear you very well. Back, back. I think Elaine got her hand up and now I'm being key. Chair, um, I think that we should um, just re re roof the whole area. What's the point of doing patch ups when you might end up having to do a bit more? You're only doing part of a job. I think it's better if we just do the whole lot in one go. Mm -hmm. Don't have to keep revisiting it all the time. Okay, Elaine. As long as we've got some sort of guarantees, I think that's an excellent idea. And, and who else would like to say something? Andy's got his hand up. 
I and think. Say exactly the same as that. We've just re-roofed a, a house that we've got in Bristol. And to be honest, a house a roof that's got 25 years on it, it's one of our biggest assets. Once you start having to pack small areas, then you find another area in another area. If you're going to do it, I totally agree with Elaine. If that's a proposal, Elaine, I second it, that we, we go for re-roofing at 424 four foot flat and do the job properly. Yeah, I'll, I'll propose that we do. Uh, any other comments before yeah. we make? Keith, Keith's got his hand up. Terry's got her hand up here, and Del's got her hand up. Okay. Yeah, so thank you, Chair. Um, with regards to this, I, I, I looked at it and I thought, well, if you're going to do the roof, let's do it in one go, get it done, and then we. it's, it's an asset, it brings in lots of uh, revenue to this council, you know, go for it. I mean, we could go for that second option, but I think you're only buying time, you, yeah. you know, it'll be a yeah. cricket ball here and there, or something else will happen, uh, you know, we have a lot of unfortunately bad weather in this country and we cannot afford to have an asset like that with rooms being put out of use and repairs having to be done to floorings and you know all the decoration every time so let's just go for it get the roof done properly um, Terry, Terry's got her hand up Terry in the room as have Ben Terry, Chris um, Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to suggest, would it work um, if we were to consider uh, the whole roof, but also consider the solar panels or even um, solar enabled tiles as well, so that they could, it could start paying for itself? We could be doing the roof one. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. it might be worth considering doing that at the same time. Yeah. Well, well done, Terry. I think um, before we move on to the next one, if, if Dale would like to just come in for a minute. Can I just clarify, this isn't the whole roof at Bailey's Court, this is just the section. I'm just slightly worried that you're saying the roof. Yeah, I, I know you said a, a section, it wasn't, I did say the whole roof. It's the, old area, the bigger area of it, so. It's, it's the original building and the old building. Yeah. So it's, it's the tiles on the roof of the, the original old building before it was extended. I think we understand that. So it's, it's the, the pitch roof. Yeah. And ben, Ben's got his hand up in the room. Sorry, Ben. And if, if we go to like, um, if we go down the option of not picking or selecting to the tiles whole area, the other two quotes on this on this are for the patching that you think fits in a smaller area. So you shouldn't really simply have like like quotes for that larger job. Um, so sort of actually a comparable thing to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then if it is a more but uh, I don't I get what I'm saying about the part of the roof, but is it literally the whole beyond part of the roof now? It's a part of that section. It's not the whole of the old building. It is a section that is over the orchard room. So it is right. a section area. Yeah, it's not the whole of the old building. Yeah. So, to my mind, then, I would prefer to have quotes based on repairing that whole section and then quotes preparing the, uh, redoing the whole of the old section room, taking the whole thing off and doing that. Um, because I think that's what we're alluding to in the comments. Isn't it? Just do the whole thing and stop the patch work, or do a wider patch, which is going to go over the top of this. That's that. I would propose that we do that. Have a section of six quotes because you'd be wanting a quote for a larger patch, and then a, a series of quotes for the whole roof to be done. I'd be very happy to second that, uh, Chairman. Uh, I'm not sure we actually need to go for the smaller patch option. I think we should go for the whole roof because it's. Uh, an investment which we should carry as well for a number of years. And if you can include the potential to the solar as well, we could at least then yes. see what the impact of costs are. A big problem. Could, could, could I actually make a suggestion then that this this leak does need something doing now? So, and I think to go out and get six quotes and then to investigate the solar panel yeah. so that mm -hmm. isn't going to happen next week so could i suggest the councillors that they consider 
taking the lodge construction quote seven hundred pounds. We know that Robin yeah. Lodge mm. has worked with us for many, many years yeah. just as an interim. Yeah. Because that's and the then look no, because mm. yeah. that's a very good idea. Then we investigate so the yeah. 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 that's the yeah. 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 insurance and so the panels are quick as well. Um, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Can, can, um, so I think I think the proposal possibly may be that um, we look at a quick repair of the seven hundred quid, and then we investigate yeah. things a little bit further to do yeah. um, a, a more bigger scale job on this particular roof. It sounds as if we've got a good I think Ben is still waving his hand at the back here. My question is for Ben. So the, when the, um, the, the, the company came and gave the second quote in, put in that temporary um, repair, that temporary repair doesn't go the length of what you need it to go to at the moment, so you can't like live on that temporary repair until we get everything sorted. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite hear that then, sorry. Ben's question. Yeah, go on. Um, ben said, so you put in your report that Nathan Forder um, um, recently fixed another roof issue at the centre. So he made a temporary repair. So that he didn't make a temporary repair to this issue. He didn't make a temporary repair to another thing. No, he it, with this repair when he was actually up there, he did a temporary repair for the interim. But then we had quite a substantial rainfall, and uh, obviously that repair. Yeah. So yeah. So that. No. So just that one. Yes, because he did he did that free of charge while he was up there quoting for this. Oh. I think. So it was pretty big, which lasted a while, but then we've had horrendous rain since then, and it's now. I still think I still think a temporary patch for the time being should be the way ahead of and uh, investigate. So, so um, so um. Uh, Fair play, Roger. Let, 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 can we have a proposal, perhaps, that we can do a quick fix just to sort out a possible leak that we've got currently, uh, and yeah. in the interim period. We look at a more substantial repair to the roof. Yeah, yeah I'll second Roger on that. Okay, so so we've got a proposal by well, Roger. So we move on and make uh, 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 hands for uh, acceptance of that proposal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you give a head count, Karen? Right. So he. Tony, Andy, Elaine, four, there, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's going on? And then, um, that's like nine in favour, I think. Those against? Those abstentions? One abstention? Maybe not. Right, then what were you? Were you? We abstention. Four. Again. Uh, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I voted for. You voted for. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. ten in favour. One, one in, one against. Right. Sorry. Uh, no against and one, one abstention. Right. That. that that doesn't actually add up. Brian actually is buying it off. Yeah, I know Brian is not in it. Yeah. <laughs> what about the Brian? It's a if you remember that, nine, ten, there's eleven. Oh no, that's right, ten, eleven. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. ten in favour. Thank you. One abstention. Thank you. I've been investing in Abigail's for you, Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All so, help gratefully received. Let's move on to the next item. Which is, if I can recollect what it might be. Is um so uh, where are we? As the society goes to print the bills, um, repair. So now we'll uh, propose the amendment to the Sunday Rules number 42 to allow eight members on each committee rather than seven as currently allowed. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
It's just slightly changed. But it's, it, is, it is different to, you would, I think, to be honest, that you, you would need, Michael is right in his comment there, that you need to, what you are actually asking for, rather than ending it for about eight members. We'll put it this way then, Sharon. Okay, you have five of the Conservatives and you'll have an independent, a Labour and um, the Citizens' Movement on each of you. Uh, that makes it five, that makes it five, three, eight. I think I'm right in saying, Chairman, but I'm open to correction, that if we did go to eight members and we kept on proportional representation, two of those extra three places would actually go to the Conservatives to maintain the equal proportional representation. I, I understand where you're coming from, uh, Mike. Um, uh, However, I, I think where Elaine's coming from is that um, we used to have, um, when it was a full conservative uh, majority, there were eight members on, on the committee rather than seven. All right, it's well, been actually, if, uh, let me finish, please. If, if it has been reduced to seven, um, and uh, for, for whatever reason. Now, now uh, um, as far as I'm, con I'm concerned, whether you've got it at eight members or whether you've got it at seven members, it is slightly irrelevant where you have this proportional representation because if you have a majority, i.e. as we have been in the Conservatives, it doesn't really matter because you can vote eight members as being all Conservatives because we have the majority. So, so I don't think it makes a slightest bit of difference whether we've got eight or seven. As it was previously, there was no limit on the number of people on committees. Exactly. It was yeah. completely down to whoever was interested in going on the committee. And one of the reasons, actually, that this Family Order 42 was brought in was so that, potentially, what could have happened would be the ruling, not ruling, but the party that had the most members could actually have prevented anybody else going on the committee if they wanted to by not voting for them. As it is at the moment, it is guaranteed that people who aren't in the the overarching well, it's not really a ruling, but the yeah, you know the, the majority party, yeah. um, that other people can be on the committees. Yeah. And that's the way we've got it, isn't it? That's yeah. as it is at the moment, yeah. yes. Um, so I think I would my my comment, my thought, and this is just my personal thought is is if you did away with that standing order forty two, potentially there could be no minority um, groups represented on any of the committees because the the majority the majority, majority of the committee people. Could, uh, at the annual meeting in May, could say, well, actually, no, we don't want anyone apart from mm. the majority party on the committee. Yeah. Which is a good justification for keeping it as a leader. Yeah. Well, we don't have a vote on this. Well, I don't think we have a vote today, do we? No, it doesn't. So it needs to go back to Elaine. So do you want it that it to stay on as it is, or which is what your original idea was, or to, in which case you can have a proposal and a seconder and then it will stand in abeyance until the next meeting. But if you want this, the, the, the addition taken out of standing on 42 completely, then obviously that will then have to go back onto a next full council meeting as a completely separate agenda item. Um, have it as keep it as eight so that um, all parties will have a representation on all, all the committees. Well, it wouldn't actually, actually because I did work out the figures today. Um, as it stands at the moment, if you had, if there were eight on a committee, the um, it would be that on a committee of eight, 5.8664 people would be conservatives and. The other two would be from the other parties, which is the way. Um, which is how it is at the moment. No, I want all parties to represent the committees. 
Yeah, it, it, it ain't. <laughs> that's not quite as what this proposal is. I think what Elaine is trying to say is it goes back to how it used to be, whereas any of the 15 councillors that sit on the council can go on the committee. Simple as that. Irrespective of whether they be independent, they be conservative, they be whatever, it's just previously it was always 15 councillors personal decision as to which of those 15 councillors wanted to be represented on which committees. And it always worked. Uh, but again, as you say, the, the, the potential scenario is that when the councillors who are interested in going on a committee are voted on at the annual meeting in May, the majority party could, if they so wish yeah. to, which I hope they would never happen, to decide not to vote for any of the people who weren't in the majority party. It's a great shame that we thought it had to be changed. Uh, you, you go to be voted and elect to represent the public, and people, yeah, yeah. you're not allowed to fully represent the public. Why can't it just go back to whoever wants to be part of the committee? It's part of the committee. Simple as that. It, it's not an issue from the Conservative point of view because you still maintain a majority anyway. I think that's what the problem is, is because they didn't get the full 15. That scared them, that that called the budget. They thought, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Chair, you want to move this on then, sir? Yeah, uh, I think we have to move it on. I I can understand where Andy's coming from, and Elaine, and uh, even Fab to some respect. That, 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 was one of us. <laughs> Roger, if you, if you don't mind. Oh, Roger, stop it. Uh, yeah, hand it thing, if you don't mind. Um, I, I can understand where the people who are not Conservatives have a, have a point that they have been elected by their constituencies um, and, and they're, they're not able to represent their constituencies and any of the committees if we, as a majority, say well, we're, we're going by the majority. So I can understand their point of view. However, um, the the um, uh, proposal was to amend the standard order 42 to about eight members. Now, I think um, if if we want to go along with that, we could go along with that because as a, as a conservative majority, um, none of them would actually ever get on to any of the committees. Um, so I really word, I worded it wrong. Well, I worded it wrong. Right, well, what I suggest then, perhaps... Oh, 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 oh. Excuse me. In fairness, Elaine, you may have worded it wrong, but that's what we've got in front of us. Um, so Being dyslexic, to... hold on a minute, Tony. Being dyslexic can be quite hard. So when I wrote that down, it was wrong. Should have expanded it a bit more. Well, I, I can understand that, but what we have in front of us is a proposal. Um, and and because that is as that is 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 as it is, we either go along with it or we don't, um, because that's what's there. Um, um, and um, what I would suggest, we either move on, or or we make a proposal to this particular amendment. So it, you know, is anybody would like to propose this particular amendment? I propose no further action, Chairman. Yeah, well, you, you, you can't. Yeah, it has to be. It's Elaine's proposal, so and you can't vote on it. it. She's saying it's not the right proposal. Yes, that's what she's saying, it's not the right proposal. So, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I was going to say, yes. Yeah, so what I suggest is that this is... If Elaine wants to change the wording of the proposal, that will then go to September for Council in a different yeah. format. Yeah. yeah. And it will be discussed at the October meeting. Uh, November. November. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. Then. So, so okay. Persia, if, if I mean, if you like to say, look, I, um, I don't want to go ahead with this proposal, move on and we'll get on to the next one, and then you can then make a proposal um, or put it in the uh, agenda for the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And before council. Yeah. Can we propose that? 
Oh, I'll put Pose here, anyway, I'll just second it. I'll second it. Elaine. Yeah, Elaine, second it. Any, so, kind of... Um, well, no, you can't vote, you can't really yeah, vote. You just, we just leave it as it, as it is, that's okay. fine, yeah. Thank you. So, let's move on then. So, the requests for, uh, from um, the uh, Jimmy Creole Fun Fair to use Jubilee Green over the um, uh, August Bank holiday. Shall I? Shall I talk you through this? Yeah, so, um, Jim Crow's Fun Fair has requested that we that he is allowed to use the Jubilee Green for his fun fair over the August Bank Holiday weekend. Um, so it's the 28th to the 31st of August. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, the fun fair will only be in a position to operate in line if HM Government, HFSE, Showman's Guild give the go-ahead initial guidance which they are expected to receive within the next week or so. Um, it's anticipated the fair will be very different to previous years and be on a much smaller scale. Um, so at the starting point, we have received his, um, the fun fair's risk assessment and their safe system of work. Um, and then there would be more information, documents, etc. produced in due, due course. Um, so what councils need to decide Firstly, whether you will permit the fun fair to use the Jubilee Green for the event, subject to running in line with the formal HM government guidance, and if so, how much the fair will be asked to pay. Uh, Jimmy Kroll has indicated that he would be able to pay the same charge as previous year, which was £600 in 2018 and £500 in 2019. Uh, councillors will then also need to decide whether the charge is made as a donation to the mayor's charity or directly to the town council, um, bearing in mind that the, the mayor's charity might be quite um, thin on the ground this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good word. Why then it was this, this <laughs> decline last year? That's it. That's it should be fair, is it? Well, that's, what, that's why I'm saying yes. council, and that's why it was asked it would come to a full council meeting rather than let you go council so have made the decision. Will, that is the cycle from year, isn't it? Yeah, it so does change from year to year. Last year it actually went to the council for um, the council funds, but previously it went to the mayor's charity. Um, and then previously before that it was to the Carnival Committee. It's them every year. Yeah, that's why I'm looking at the Fair Harlem Fair Harlem Fair Harlem Fair Harlem Sorry, Elaine, you to say something? Yeah, um, because of the, co uh, like the Covid, um, maybe just to just 100, because Sorry, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that so uh, due to the COVID nineteen, we should reduce it to to four hundred. Okay. Well, well, it wasn't anyone extra. It was someone in the meeting. There's nobody else part of the the um, <laughs> meeting department. Anybody yeah. just laughing gas stuff or something? <laughs> <laughs> For anybody outside of this meeting, it may be the members of the general public, I have to assure you it's not my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> anyway, um, uh, my, my question is, um, uh, particularly to Sharon in this particular in instance, is that um, they've gone from 600 to 400, sorry, 600 to 500 in subsequent years. And can we not ask them for a little bit more as opposed to going down? Oh, once it was thousand. Yeah, originally it was actually a thousand, although I think back when it, when it started, they paid a thousand pounds to the to, to the carnival committee, and that went to actually organising the carnival. Then when they did away with the carnival, um, the money came to the mayor's charity with 600 pounds actually being spent on like rental and then 400 pounds was used for um social interactions they had costume people dressed up and that sort of thing 
Um, but as Ginny said, there's no way that they'd be able to do that this year, even if they can go ahead because of uh, restrictions. And then last year, council decided to just charge them £500, um, which equates to £125 per day, whereas in 2018, it was £150 a day for four days. So, but again, it's down to, completely down to council to set the charge. So. Ben has yeah. been waving his hand frantically. Ben, um, Ben. Probably going to sound a bit controversial now. So I'm personally a little bit wary about what's going ahead, considering that we've um, done things like cancel and um, even today in mind with what's been advised, but not advised advice. And I'm just a little concerned as to what it would be viewed as publicly. Um, and what local residents here, close to where this is going to be in traction, would feel, think, and be comfortable with in terms of an event taking place like that with the current high event situation around it. Um, I, for one, don't know if I would be happy if this was like at the bottom of my road or across my garden fence, which is what some of these neighbours near us are going to have to deal with. And then considering you know, obviously some advice around social distancing and all that at the moment and how unsuccessful social distancing doesn't appear to happen in a supermarket aisle and things like that in relation to a mass of people being here. I'm just a bit wary and I think that the northern side of I'd rather it didn't go ahead than it went ahead, regardless of whatever the public advice ended up being at the time, just because of the proximity to people's residences and just making this place more of a place to hold the gay spot like that in a hot spot. And um, so I'm kind of airy, feel like I'm airing too much on the side of caution, as well as trying to balance, you know, would I be happy with it maybe you know, taking place at the end of my driveway? And I don't think I would be. Um, I think I'd be in a situation where I think I'd actually have rather it was just given a miss, considering how much we've missed so far. Yeah. Um, and considering how um, targeted that type of, the type of group and the, the clientele that would go to that type of event. No, from what, just to, to, just to look at the other side, I, yeah, I mean, that's my personal view is what you say as well. But because um, I did ask Jimmy about that, he said it wouldn't be anywhere near they can't they can't see that it would ever be big rides with masses of youth people attending you know what i mean that sort of they they are thinking more but again until they get guidance they can't make any formal decision or give us a plan or a design of what they are looking but what what they would envisage would be an area cordoned off with terrace fencing people would pay to come in on the door and queue to come in and you only have a certain number of people in at once and it would be more the small like teacup rides people would buy tokens when they come in and then they would literally work their way round the ride yeah. hand their token over their child goes on that ride go to the next ride hand their token over the child goes do you see what i mean that's yeah. how they're envisaging it not a big but, yeah, so it's it, like, it, it, it completely valid. In my mind, it's like, if we're making this decision today and there's no guidance, no guidelines, I'd rather just say the event can go ahead. Yeah, and, it, and the reason, it is, to, it is too early for it to come to a to council, essentially, to make a decision. But council said last year it had to come to a full council meeting for a decision. Um, so that's why it's here tonight, even though it's not till the end of August. Does that make sense? Michael, I agree with Ben. Uh, yeah. This is only seven weeks away. Uh, who knows what the situation mm -hmm. is going to be in seven weeks' time? We've seen in Leicester how sudden spikes have come up. Mm. We've had one not too far away from us at the hospital at uh, Western Super yeah. um, We can't control um, groups of young people if they don't come into the actual fun fair. Standing around outside and congregating, I think this is a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. And the optic can't do it. Although we're doing this when we cancel something with a thing. 
And as you say, the amount of time to figure out what the yeah, yeah. yeah. if you did go there. Well, I agree with Ben as well. Any other comments? Okay. No other comments. Um, I, I go along with Michael and Ben and Terry to some respect. Um, however, they have put in a, a COVID-19 um, assessment uh, to, to, to the council. Now, I'm not saying that we should effectively go ahead with this, but I think we should just put it in abeyance and see what the government guidelines are going to be in the next couple of weeks. And if we still can hold the event for the guy to uh, put up his, his, his um, smaller um, uh, fun fair, then I think we, we, we ought to just look at it in, 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 in nearer the time. And we have to, and we have the option to uh, um, terminate you know, the, the, this particular event as uh, our government guidelines will, will be uh, um, to, to, to that particular event. Um, Can that, I make a suggestion then that you delegate the decision to Leisure Youth and Amina to, to decide and they will be meeting on the 17th of August? That yeah, that, that, that's... Ben's got his hand up again. Ali Lane. Ben. Can I go for Ben? Ben. 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 Yeah. Ben. 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 So I can't see the difference of having a fun fair here. If the government's allowed the fun fair at the Thorpe Park uh, powers uh, and places like that open, so what is the difference from that to having the fun fair here if the, the COVID-19 act is in place? That's we know they have said um, they have said that they will have hand sanitizers on all the, the rides and that sort of thing. So they have they are looking at it from a COVID nineteen point of view. They're not just saying we want to come, not do anything. Because obviously, from their insurance point of view, they have to they will have to very much work within strict guidelines. I, I think that we should allow it to go ahead. The gov like I've just. Said, Governments have allowed all the theme parks open, and I cannot see any difference between the theme park. Well, obviously they're bigger, but they're open. Why can't we have the fun fair here? Thank you, Elaine. Can we just move on to Ben? What you'd like to say, Ben? You got your hand up. Yeah. So basically, I would like to propose that based on the information I've available from today, I don't want to delegate the decision down to the pleasure communities. I would want to say that today we say we don't want to go ahead. Uh, that we might propose for. And then considering our mayor's charities are going to be really hammered this year in terms of charitable donations from all public events that happened about the whole year. Ordinarily we would normally try and depend on what all council would do, give some money for those mayor's charities. So there's money we would have raised from that from there being there, i.e. like a normal 500, 600, 300, whatever people feel comfortable with. Just say we um, then put a small sum aside to the next charities, as it's very exceptional circumstances, and um, we find that similar in our budget just to scrape up something that can uh, be, be a charitable donation from within the council budget. So don't go ahead with the um, fund there, and then find uh, just a small donation from the council to the mayor's charity fund. Um, just in light of the fact we've had no um, festival, we haven't had any other events that have been able to run where charitable donations have been active. This can't run where charitable donations have been active. And time. there might be something mentioned with the fireworks and they haven't been just in the end. Well, I mean, you, you wouldn't have to make a decision on that. But we I don't. Think we have that sort of gender item later in the year. You have to keep going ahead. I mean, mm. all charities are going to suffer throughout yeah. this whole period. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a completely exceptional circumstance. I'll say, can, can, can we have a sort of proposal then? Yeah, um, so Ben, ben proposed that based on the information currently available, we do not permit the fund fair to run in August. Uh, at, at this committee. So, um, Andy? I just think that 
So far, we've taken all of the advice on board that the government have given when it came to reopening the skate park. We waited until the government said it was safe to do so, and we've then done that. Uh, apparently, within the next couple of weeks, guidance is coming through on things like fun fairs and that mm -hmm. from Shona Field and from central government as well. So at this stage, to just say no, then what's the difference between where we've taken guidance for reopening the state park, for example, reopening our own playground areas, as to something like this with guidance coming from central government? Uh, fair point. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I would say about that in comparison is I'm familiar with the skate park and our play parks, all things that have a steady flow of people at a, at, all throughout the time. This is this is an event that it, this is an event that's limited in the time frame for a few days. So you end up creating a a thing that attracts a lot of people in a very short space of time. And I just think that's very different. And I'm just thinking in terms of being a resident local to this area. Is that something I would want living opposite the green opposite and anywhere near here? I don't think it is. I don't think I'd want people driving, uh, lots of people walking here and, and, and just contributing to that. Why, why don't no. you open the doors and ask them? And wait, wait, Ben, when you said about the skate park, every time I've walked past, there's been, they're not doing the two metres distancing. No, I don't, I don't disagree, but in the, in the skate park, there isn't like an uptick of like 200, 300 people trying to go and use it all at once. Mm. It's a regular community, it's a smaller community, and the same with all that play parks. And play parks have only just opened in the last week or so. Mm. Um, my, con my concern personally, from a town council point of view, is that the fun fair will obviously be able to police and manage the people with inside their fencing or however it would turn out yes. to be but to, who would be responsible for the potential masses of groups of young people who might gather outside the fencing they wouldn't be within the fun fairs limit but so who would look after that sort of area. It's slightly different when the fun fair is on the whole field because it's, you know, and in the normal situation, if you get groups of young people turning up, well, they hang around the rides, but chances are if it's within a very much secure area, it's much more difficult for, and the town council as, as officers and staff, we're not going to be able to go and say to people, well, you shouldn't be there and that's too many and you're too close and and we we genuinely have no idea as michael said whether there's going to be spikes or whether we're being locked down again or and i know that the fair wouldn't won't run if if those sort of scenarios happen but you just you just don't know on the areas that are outside of the control of the fair yeah, can we just move to an on? So uh, Ben proposed that based on the information currently available, we do not permit the fun fair to run in August. So, can I just add an amendment to that, if you don't mind, Ben? That um, um, if government guidelines change, then we need to re readdress this particular issue, um, rather than just poo poo it, um, you know, because. Um, we, we are coming out of a lockdown, and yeah, it depends on a spike. Nobody knows at this moment in time. I haven't got a crystal ball. I don't think any, anybody else has. But I'm just suggesting that we make amendment to your proposal rather than just cancel it completely. To say, just can we just um, wait until we hear the government guidelines? That's yeah. my. But then who will who will make that final decision? So then you need to, what I'm saying is you need to delegate someone to make that decision as to when the government guidelines come out and then Jimmy Cross Fund Fair comes back with well, what they can do. Well, they should go ahead of this present stage or effectively buying a pillion of hope because we don't know what is going to happen. 
And also, there must be a cut-off point that Jimmy needs to know. Yes, there was, well, I don't know. I mean, he's obviously okay. best okay. put to do something somewhere, somehow, because he's done nothing right. for months right. and months and months. So right. he's, well, you know, yeah. desperate to, to do as much as... It's a plan, it? but otherwise the town council's being, maybe we are allow that, will be in the state yeah. the controversy mm -hmm. becomes something. So that's all it took them. When did it plan again? Oh. Okay, I'm still direct question then, to, to about Mind and that proposal. What have we thought about it in terms of, at the moment, we've had the COVID a 19 way of dealing with matters when we weren't in a we weren't able to run council meetings and committee structures. We have the action plan, and, which is the chair the of council plan. and the chair of finance. Yeah. Yeah. So what if and the town park. And yes. the town park. So what if we said it was council for now on the proviso that if the government advice comes out and then through the action plan we can agree as that group on that action plan that it can, can't go ahead based on those guidelines have set and we have to have what the, the risk assessment out of that fund fair is, is telling us. And um, we kind of defer that as a reversal decision, if you like. Yeah, I really like this one, because I'm not sure you would advise. I still think we should wait for the government guidance on this. Well, that's, that's yes. what we're saying. Yes. 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 We say, no yeah. for now, no for now, but if the government, government guidance says that you can, then the, through the Coronavirus Action Plan, the Chair yeah. of Council, the Chair of Finance and Town Park could make, but well, I'm not sure I'd want to make the decision. I'm not sure I'd want to make a decision. So you can't make a decision that because we don't know what the government guidance no, will be no. in the next few weeks. So otherwise, no, that's, that's, that's why I would suggest that you delegate it to Leisure U, which yeah. is not yeah. yeah. the 17th of August, which is much closer to the time. Yeah. And if Jimmy needs to get the information out of the yeah. town council, yeah. then that's fine. Yeah. 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 And if Jimmy is desperate to come, he will yeah. he will wait till that time. Yeah. That's that's yeah. and by then we might know a bit more of the state of play of the country and the government yeah. guidance will be out and more restrictions might be lifted or more might be put in place. Yeah. Oh, I suppose we've delegated yeah. that. Exactly. Yeah. So, so let's, let's, let's just move on from this so that we can just uh, like get this out of the way because we'll be here all night. I don't know if you have a hand up there. Yeah, I did. Well, yeah, sorry, Chair. What we could probably do is cancel for now as soon as that guidance comes out. Uh, and Robin goes out to all councillors, approving, depending on what it says on there, if they approve, like, fun fairs or whatever, around Robin, and then we can do it that way instead of having to wait until the next meeting. I don't, around, I don't think around Robin would work because it, it can get to too many people. It's, I think you need to delegate it to somebody specific. Yeah. You, actually, you couldn't make any council by around Robin. If I could make a proposal, then we would defer this particular decision to the Leisure of Youth and Needs yeah. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the acceptance that we've got uh, guidance from uh, yeah. the government, um, how we're going to yeah. proceed with, with uh, the COVID-19. Yeah. Can I make that proposal, please? Uh, I'm going to make it, because we do have the proposal on the table, the original one, which... I'm um, not Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, so decision deferred. Pleasure and meters. And then we've got the burden to yeah. meet the um, uh, government yeah. on the COVID 19. Yes. Yeah. Providing HM so, government guidance. So I proposed it, uh, Roger seconded it. So can we have a show of hands to move this on? Uh, Michael? So that, um, Mike, are you, Sorry. Are you in favour of that? Yes, I'll go on with that. Right, so that's uh, unanimous, I think. Unanimous. Okay, perfect, let's move it on. Um, so the next uh, item is um, uh, um, the annual review of the Bradley State Town Council policies and procedures. I'm hoping that all of you have read these particular policies and procedures, as I have done this afternoon. I, ha I have given you a crib sheet on the front which shows you the changes that have been made to various 
horses and the CCTV policy um, Ben has been involved in like his, his, his change that he's put in so um, yeah and to save a lot of time although if anybody wants to raise anything specifically about any of these particular um, items on, on, on this uh, annual report then please you make make yourself known. I would suggest that the items um, thirteen four one to thirteen point four twenty four. Oh, no, actually, that's my sorry. It's um thirty two thirty three. It's thirty four. Yeah, sorry. Um, my typo there. So that's it. Yeah, thirty four. Yeah, quite right. Thirty four. Yeah. We take we take these as we we've, we've all read them and we're in favour of them. Yeah. Um, unless unless anybody would like to make a. Yeah. 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 I've, I've just condensed it down because oh, I was right, trying okay. to get the, um, right. the bits That's of paper right. down. Yeah, I yeah. should say to you, yeah. don't worry about page lines, size yeah. fonts, or anything like that. I've tried to squeeze it down to a smaller number of pages as possible. Right. No, the there's, there are, there, the forms are electronic yeah. and they're completely expandable, oh, so you can yes, add fine. in as much as you need. And the other yeah. question I have is right on the back page, Working at home, 12, point 12, five, six, and seven. Um, is everyone doing that when they're working at home, completing five important records? Um, that's a good question. I don't know on that one. And have you uh, maintained adequate records before you work at home? Yes, I know exactly who's working at home and what they're doing. Yeah. Well, I don't know what they're doing because obviously I'm not a spy on the wall, but yeah. Time time and they know that they are nobody is permitted to do any more than their um, allotted hours. So nobody will be claiming for extra hours. But I guess in Well, that, I mean, <laughs> I know that it's difficult, isn't it? But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, who proposed? I think Tom, Tom, did you second? I'll second that proposal. Only was it you proposed or was it Roger proposed? Yeah, no, Roger proposed. Hey? Okay. No, oh, you did. Oh, Roger. Derek, sorry, Sharon. You know, earlier on when you said about me proposing Franklin for press officer? Yes. I proposed for him to be deputy mayor. And then Tony came in and said that he spoke with Franklin and he, he couldn't bet. Right, okay. So we knew that it was something and that's what it yeah. was. It was get to mayor, okay. So, right, I will amend that if we're happy that it was not yeah. the first folks person. Mike, are you happy that you signed yeah. for it? It was get to mayor. Yeah, I'll change that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks, Elaine. So we, can we, we, Tom seconded the proposal but for all the policies, but um, was it Tony that proposed? Yeah, okay. Lovely. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on 13.5 update on the coronavirus. Sorry, can you just take a vote on that for the policy oh, procedure? Yeah, <laughs> can we have a vote, please? Yeah, that's unanimous. Thank you. Well, let's move on. 13.5 update on the coronavirus action plan. Over to you, Sharon. Okay, it's only just a quick update. Right, so um, State Park has reopened and the risk assessment was done. Circulated councils is on the website. The tennis courts have reopened and being, are being used by tennis and pickleball. And junior netball training is doing this evening. The risk assessment was done for that, circulated them on the website. The play areas have reopened. The risk assessments were done for that, circulated and on our website. The activity centres have reopened. The risk assessment and special hiring condition sheet have been done, circulated and on our website. We've sent all the documents to our insurance companies as well. 
for an activity, the activity centre, it's obviously restricted bookings at the moment due to the type of activity currently permitted. Hires are starting to return, but some groups and organisations not going to be starting back till September. Crickets returning at the weekend, all hires need to supply their own risk assessments. So that's where we are for now. Thank you, Sharon. Um, do we need to vote on that? No, that's just an update. Okay. That's what got. So the next one is to confirm the dates of the uh, forthcoming meetings as per your agenda pack. Um, do we need to go through that? I don't think so. Not really, no. Just to, let, just to remind you, there's an extra full council meeting on the 22nd of July at 7 o'clock. That will be to sign off the audit papers. Yeah. Um, and then planning and environment committee will follow at 8 o'clock or as soon as full council finishes. Perfect. So um, I, I thank you all for your attendance. Um, yeah. all and, and then the members of the general public who uh, uh, sitting in the background from that. Um, and um, thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Bye. 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 Bye.